for Chasing Dirt presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as Old Dutch Cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. But Nick, with the man you're chasing murdered and the stolen diamonds gone from their hiding place, how can you possibly hope to carry on? That's simple, Patsy. We just follow the clues. Clues? What clues do we have? The gold-headed cane, the angle from which the knife was thrown. And the ink spots on the bill. Of course. When we put them all together, they spell the end of our search. But there's no time to be lost. We dock in less than two days. Now the case of the gold-headed cane. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. As our story starts, we find Sir Armand Coleman and his servant Gig being shown through the Filbert Diamond Mine, one of South Africa's biggest. I say, Mr. Hopkins, it's awfully decent of you to take your time to show us through the mine. Being general manager of a mine like this must be quite an undertaking. Yes, Sir Armand, it keeps me pretty busy. But you're, we're always happy, you know, to show visitors how diamonds are mined. Yeah, but how do you know one of these visitors won't walk off with some of the diamonds? You uh, don't seem to have any guards here. We don't need them, Sir Armand. Before you leave the mine, you have to pass through a special exit gate where an X-ray machine shows the attendant whether or not you have any diamonds on your person, no matter how cleverly concealed. Oh, I see. Clever idea, then. <laughs> Blimey, look at all the diamonds spread out on the table, Sir Armand. By Jew, they are beauty. Yeah, those are some of the choice samples of diamonds found in this mine. May I look at them, Mr. Hopkins? Uh, uh, closely, I mean. Why, certainly. Oh, Mr. Hopkins, could I ask you a question, please? Yes, of course. Uh, what is it, Gig? Uh, uh, this picture here on the wall, is that the mine we've just been through? Yes, Gig, it is. You see, we came in here, went down through this way, then turned here, came back along here. We're now standing in this room here. Blimey, we've had some walk, ain't we? <laughs> uh, where's this exit gate you've been telling us about? Well, you see this passage? leads out of this room. Well, the gate is right here, just around the corner. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That sure is some map. <laughs> well, Sir Armand, you ready to leave? Yes, thank you. Uh, through this way, please. This has been a most instructive... Oh, confound it, my ankle, and I dropped my cane again. Oh, I'll get it, sir. Oh, here it is. Your ankle hurt much, sir? No, it's all right, Gig. Let's get on. Uh, your bad leg troubling you, Sir Armand? A uh, little, yes. Must be this long walk we've had. Well, here we are. Here's the exit gate. Uh, you go first, Gig. Yes, <laughs> Stop under the archway until the attendant says he's satisfied you're not carrying any diamonds out. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Glad I didn't try to get away with nothing here. <laughs> okay, you can get out, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Couldn't find nothing on old gig, eh? <laughs> you next, Sir Armand, if you will, please. Mm, of course. There's a queer sensation. Oh, no, no. I'll hit my ankle again. Here, I've got the cane, Sir Armand. I'll keep it till you come out. Eh? No, very well, gig. You're all right, sir. You may go. Well, thank you. You have to go through this too, Miss Hopkins? Oh, yes, indeed. Everyone does from the owner down. Take no chances on anyone. Okay, Mr. Hopkins. Well, Sir Armand, uh, that's about all. It's been very interesting, I assure you. Thanks no end, Mr. Hopkins. Been just fine, Mr. Hopkins. We go out this door here. That's right. You'll find your car just outside. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thanks again. Did you get those diamonds, Sir Armand? I certainly did. The trick worked like a charm. And Mr. Hopkins will never know I got the idea from one of the stories he told us. <laughs> That's good, sir. <laughs> Come on, Gig. Let's get back to the hotel and pack. In 12 hours, we can be on the boat, headed for the States, and a life of luxury. Uh, take this message, Miss Gerald. Yes, sir? 50 carats of first-quality diamonds stolen from Filbert Mine and daring robbery. Suspect believed to be on boat bound for United States. Lost discovered in checkup late this afternoon. Famous American detective Nick Carter called in on case. Have you got that, Miss Gerald? Yes, sir. See that it gets out at once. All news, sir. <sighs> this has been a wonderful trip, Nick. Except for this cold of mine. Oh. oh. Poor girl. You know, it's the first time I've made a transatlantic crossing by plane. 
Yeah, I don't mind taking time for a trip like this. Particularly when it's at someone else's expense. <laughs> you know from what John Filbert said... Oh, well, uh, Filbert is the owner of the diamond mine, Nick? Yes, I met him at a convention some years ago. Uh-huh. From what he said, he's more worried about how the diamonds got out than he is about the loss of these particular stones. You'll find out, Nick. I'll bet on that. Huh? Hope you're right. Come in, Hopkins. Yes, Mr. Gilbert. Uh, Nick, this is Charles Hopkins, our general manager. Uh, Hopkins, how do you do? Uh, he was the one who showed this man Coleman through the mine the day the thefts occurred. Oh, yes, yes. Mr. Hopkins, Mr. Filbert here tells me you're sure Coleman is the man who got away with the gems. He must be, Mr. Carter. Our display table is checked every night, you see. So when we missed the stones, we went back over every visitor for that day. Mm-hmm. The only one that presented anything out of the ordinary was Coleman, who dropped his cane as he went through the exit gate. So we figure the cane must have something to do with it. Very probably. Well, if Coleman secreted the stones in his cane, he must still have them with him. I think the best plan will be for Patsy and me to fly directly to the ship he's sailing on and see if we can find them. So if you will radio the skipper that we're coming and give me a full description of the man and his servant, we'll be on our way. Oh, oh, before you go, Nick, I, uh, I want to give you a small retainer to cover your expenses at least. Uh, you have the money, Hopkins? Uh, yes, sir, right here. The two $500 bills. I have to apologize, Mr. Carter, but I accidentally spilled some red ink on the corner of them while they were on my desk. No, that doesn't matter, Mr. Hopkins. Thank you. Now, let's get on with the details. We have to reach Coleman's ship before it docks, and we haven't too much time. Such a beautiful stroll around the deck, Monsieur Coleman. I say, Madame Duquesne, I think a cocktail won't go badly before we go down to dinner. Huh? That is such an excellent idea, Monsieur. Shall I mix the cocktail, sir? Uh, no, Gig, you may go. We won't need you until after dinner. Oh, yes, sir. You'll find everything you need right there. Madame Duquesne, we've gotten to know each other quite well these last few days. Yes. Why don't we stop being so formal? You call me Armand, and I'll call you Sarita. Ah, that is another of your lovely ideas, Monsieur. Almost? <laughs> Shall I mix the cocktail? I am very good at it. If you like. You'll find the things on that table. You would like a Manhattan, Armand? They are my favorite. Whatever you desire, Sarita. Huh? There's the vermouth. Oh, of course, Nick. No, shall I? Oh, no, 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 I have it. <laughs> oh, Armand, I've spilled it all over my hands. Now I shall have to wash them. The wash basin's in the other room, Sarita. I'll mix the cocktails while you're gone. Hurry now, I shall return at once. Mixing drinks is a man's job anyway. A woman's job is to look pretty and feed a man's vanity. <laughs> do I feed your vanity, Armand? You do indeed, my pretty. And I'm happy that you do. I shouldn't... Uh, 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 what is that uh, funny noise, Armand? Are you uh, already? Uh, Please wait for uh, me. Ah... Uh, now, Armand, I'm ready for... Who are you? What are you? Armand, who is that? Armand! You made good time, Mr. Carter, but even so, you're too late. Too late? For what? To talk to Coleman. He was killed a half hour ago. Uh-oh. Killed? How? A knife in his throat. The woman who was with him when it happened reported it to me. She said she was washing her hands in the dressing room when she heard a funny noise. When she came out, Coleman was lying dead on the floor. Hmm. Did she see anyone else? Yeah, there was a man in the room. But he dashed out when he saw her. She said she wouldn't know him again. She was so scared. This is something I hadn't counted on. Look here, Captain. I want something done about this man ready. Uh, I'm busy just now. Drop in later, won't you? I want action now. Two days ago, this Redding moved my deck chair to one side and put his own chair where mine should be. He insulted me. I'm too busy to do anything about that now, sir. Now, come back this evening, will you? Oh, all right, all right. But I'll poke this guy Redding right in the snoot if he doesn't. Sorry, Mr. Carter. Just one of the things in the captain's life. (laughs) Yes. Well, shall we take a look at Coleman's cabin? I'd like to get started on my investigation. Perhaps what I'm looking for is still here. This 
Mrs. Coleman's stateroom, Mr. Carter. Dr. Samuels, this is Nick Carter and Miss Bowen. Mr. Carter, this is the ship's doctor. How do you do, sir? How do you do, sir? How do you do, doctor? Now, that's Gig, Coleman's servant. Is everything the way you found it, Doctor? Uh, yes, Captain. You said Mr. Carter was coming, so I've made my inspection without moving anything. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hmm. Doctor, would you say that this knife was stabbed into the throat or thrown? Well, I, I did think that it was a peculiar angle for a stabbing, but the throwing hadn't occurred to me. You find anything on the knife, Nick? The handle seems to be clean. No. Oh. No prints. Uh-uh. Gig, where were you when Coleman was killed? Uh, when Sir Armand and the lady came in after they'd been walking on deck, he told me he wouldn't need me till after dinner. So I went out and talked to a man I met yesterday. When I came back, the captain and the doctor were here. Uh, I verified that part of it, Mr. Carter. Hmm. Looks as if Coleman was mixing a drink when he was killed, doesn't it? That's what Madame de Cain uh, told me when she, she was the one who was with him at the time. Oh, I see. Well, if he was standing there at the table where the drinks are, the knife must have been thrown through the window, judging by the angle at which it entered his throat. Yes, you're certainly right about that, Mr. Carter. Oh, Patsy, do you yeah. see that gold-headed cane Filbert told us Coleman carried? Yes, it's standing over there in the corner. Ah, good. You want it? Yes, please. Have you seen that cane before, Mr. Carter? No, but I've heard about it. Here, Nick. Thanks. Imagine this head comes off. <clears throat> well, there must be a catch here somewhere. Uh, that does it. Hmm. Why? Well, inside we find the motive for the killing. You mean the diamonds? I mean the diamonds are gone. You expected to find diamonds in the head of the cane? I did, Captain. When Coleman left South Africa, he had about 50 carats of flawless diamonds hidden there. It's empty now. So I should guess that the killer has taken the stones. Then all we have to do is search the ship, find the diamonds, and arrest whoever has them as the murderer. Yes, you could do it that way, Captain, but maybe I can save you some time if I can do a little figuring. Uh, you know, Mr. Carter, there's one thing that puzzles me about this. Yes? What's that, Doctor? Well, the woman who reported the killing, Madame Duquesne, said she came to the captain's office immediately. Now, allowing for the time it took her to get there and the time it took me to get down here after that... The man should have been dead about 20 minutes. But I found that he'd been dead at least an hour. Is that so? Yeah. I wonder why she waited over half an hour before reporting the murder. Yes, Patsy. I wonder, too. <laughs> Back to the case of the gold-headed cane. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. As we pick up our story, we find Nick, Patsy, and the captain standing on deck outside the window of Coleman's stateroom. You see, Captain, it's just as I said. A knife thrown through this window at anyone standing at that table would enter the throat at the exact angle that the knife entered Coleman's throat. Nick, this is a curious coincidence. Oh, what's that, Patsy? The name on this deck chair right under Coleman's window is Redding. Yes? You remember that the passenger busted into the captain's office was complaining about his chair having been replaced by one belonging to a man named Redding? Yes. Well, here it is. So Redding wanted to be in this particular spot no matter whom he annoyed, huh? Mm-hmm. Patsy, take down the names of the passengers in the adjacent chairs and see if any of them saw anything of this. Surest thing you know, Nick. What are you going to do? Going to see what Mr. Redding has to say about this. <laughs> Well? Pardon my intrusion, Mr. Redding. Just curious to know why you changed your deck chair from wherever it was to the position it now occupies. They put my chair in the wrong place to begin with. What's it in your life? I'm acting on behalf of the captain. His chart doesn't show your chair in its present position. I can't help that. That's the spot I was promised. Mr. Redding, do you happen to know a man named Sir Armand Coleman? 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 Yes. Never heard of him. Oh, I see you have a burn on the palm of your right hand, Mr. Redding. Been working recently? What I have on the palm of my hand is no concern of yours. Quite correct. I was just curious to know if you got it by practicing knife throwing. Knife? Get out of here. Get out. I've had enough of this. Very well, Mr. Redding. Oh, uh, by the way, did you hear about the murder on board a while ago? Murder? 
Mm-hmm. I'd like to know what you're getting at with all these questions. You suspect me of the murder, perhaps? I was going to say when you interrupted me that I'm about to make a very interesting call. I'm going to call on a woman who saw the killer and says she can identify him. So long, Mr. Redding. See you later. <laughs> Professor, you had time to find out about those other passengers? Nobody saw anything, Nick. They were all downstairs, uh, below decks, I <laughs> guess I should say. Yes, I guess you should. Is that you, Mr. Carter? Oh, yes, Captain. Anything new? Maybe, maybe not. I'll leave you to judge. Okay, what is it? Well, as soon as Madame Duquesne, the murder witness, got back to her cabin, she called for a plumber. Said the drain in her wash basin was stopped up. As it happened, the plumber was free, so he went there at once. He cleaned out the drain and left. But when he got back to his quarters, he discovered one of his wrenches were missing. He asked Madame Duquesne about it, but she said she hadn't seen it. And he's sure he left it there. Well, very interesting indeed. I'm on my way to her stateroom now, Captain. You want to come along? Maybe we can find the answer. <laughs> Yes, Madame Duquesne isn't at home. Well, I think we better get in and have a look at her room anyway. I have a key, Mr. Carter. I'll let you in. Thanks. All right, Patsy. See if you can find the wrench. I'm sure it's hidden somewhere here. Right. What makes you so sure Madame Duquesne has it, Mr. Carter? I believe she stole Coleman's diamonds. Then try to find a safe place to hide them. She got the idea of putting him in the wash basin drain, so she sent for the plumber. Watch what he did, then stole one of his wrenches, and when he was gone, opened up the pipe again and hid the diamonds inside. Well, why didn't she just put them down through the drain in the basin? Too big to go through the strainer, I should say. Dick, oh. I found the wrench. Good. It was under the mattress. Now, suppose we have a look at that drain. Right. Well, hurry up, Nick. I can't wait. Oh, just a minute, just a minute. There. Oh. And look at these, Captain. What? Well, magnificent stones, aren't they? Why, there's a fortune there. What are you doing in my room? Looking for diamonds, Madame Duquesne. And we found them. <gasps> Madame Duquesne, you're under arrest for the murder of Sir Armand Coleman. No, I did not kill him. But you did steal the diamonds, didn't you? Yes, I admit I took the diamonds. When I came out of Coleman's dressing room, I saw a man standing there with Coleman's cane in his hand. When I spoke to him, he dropped the cane and disappeared. And you got curious, examined the cane, and found the diamonds. Yes. I could not resist them. I hid them here in my room. Then I reported the murder as if it had just happened. In heaven's name, why did you do that? I had to. Gid knew I was with Corman. He knew we were to agree together for dinner. If I had not reported it, I should have been blamed for the murder myself. Can you prove you didn't kill him? No, she didn't do it, Captain. But she knows who did. Don't you, madam? I... I believe I would recognize him if I saw him. Good. And I think I know who it is. Will you come with me and identify him? I will be glad to do that. If you let me get my... <laughs> uh, and the cane. Oh. That... that just came through the window. She's dead, Nick. Come on, Captain. After him. There he goes. Up for it. Stop! Stop! Stop or I'll shoot! If you want me, come and get me! He's going over the rail. Don't jump, man! There he goes! You two can play at that game, Captain. Stand by to pick us up. Don't cut or you'll kill yourself. You fool. Man overboard! Man overboard! Man overboard! Well, it takes a brave man to dive into the ocean as Nick did, but Nick is never the man to let a criminal get away from him. In just a moment, we'll hear the conclusion of today's story. Now for the conclusion of the case of the gold-headed cane. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. Stopping his liner in mid-ocean, the captain rescues Nick from the icy waters, together with his unconscious captive, Redding. The latter is put to bed in his cabin, under the doctor's care, while Nick thaws out in the captain's quarters. An hour later, Nick drops into Redding's cabin. 
You think he'll pull through, Doctor? Yes, I think so. He lost some blood from the wound in his leg where you shot him, but he, it's nothing serious. Can I talk to him? Oh, no, not just now. He's sleeping. I just gave him a sedative to quiet him. He's very restless. He's sort of wandering in his mind. He kept calling for someone to get him out of this. I didn't get the name he said, but it sounded as if he was being paid by someone to uh, do what he did. Well, that's a new angle. I think I'll have a look through his things. If there's anyone else mixed up in this, I'd like to know who it is. Mr. Carter and Miss Bowen to see you, Mr. Filbert. Well, Nick, glad to see you back. Glad to be back, John. Uh, did you accomplish anything, Nick? Well, yes and no. I found the man who stole the diamonds, but he was dead when we found him. Oh, that's a tough break. But I got the diamonds back for you. Here. Excellent, excellent. Uh, you never seem to fail to get what you go after. In this particular case, John, I got more than I went after. Yes? Is Mr. Hopkins around? Well, well yes, yes. I, I'll ask him to come in. Yes, Mr. Filbert? Ask Mr. Hopkins to step in here. Yes, sir. I want him to hear the rest of this story. I think it'll interest him even more than it will you. Well, right. If you want to see me, Mr. Filbert. Oh, hello, Mr. Carter. Have a successful trip? I did. Found the thief and recovered the diamonds. And had a very pleasant plane ride in the bargain. Good. <laughs> Mr. Hopkins, I'm puzzled about one thing. Yes, Mr. Carter. You said the diamonds on that display table near the exit gate were checked every night, didn't you? That's right. As I understand, these diamonds were stolen about noon. Correct, sir. And why wasn't the loss reported until late on the following day? Uh, why, uh, well, I, I thought that... Was to uh, give the it... thief a chance to get safely aboard the boat that sailed for the States that evening, so he'd be out of the country before the loss was reported, wasn't it? See here, Carter. Are you accusing me of something? John? Uh, yes, Nick. When I was here before, Hopkins gave me two new $500 bills as a retainer, remember? Yes, I recall that. And he apologized because he'd spilled red ink in the corner of them. Yes, yes, I recall that, too. What would you gather when I show you these five new $1,000 bills that also have red ink spilled on them in precisely the same places? See here, Carter, I... Be quiet, Hopkins. Go on, Nick. Where did those five bills come from? I found them in the stateroom of the man named Redding, the man who killed the diamond thief, Coleman, and tried to steal the stones from it. I, I don't follow you, Nick. Well, here's what I think happened. Sit down, Hopkins, and be quiet. Well, uh, John... I believe Hopkins allowed Coleman, who was really an international jewel thief, to steal the diamonds from the display table. Probably even suggested the idea to him in some way. And let him pass them through the x-ray machine by getting away with that phony cane trick. See here, Coleman. And he hired Redding, another international crook, to kill Coleman and get the stones away from him. He paid him these bills, which I found in Redding's cabin. You can't prove a word of that, Carter. Uh, that is pretty complicated, Nick. Uh, what would Hopkins get out of it? He and Redding would undoubtedly split the proceeds. The $5,000 was advance expense money. Hopkins could have identified Coleman as a thief. But as Redding would have the jewels, they'd not be recovered. So Hopkins is in the clear. Redding is in the clear if he's not called for the killing. And Hopkins and Redding split the proceeds when they sell the gems. All that deduction based on a blot of red ink. It proves nothing. Your fingerprints on the bills will furnish all the additional proof necessary. <sighs> fingerprints? Yes. New bills take fingerprints excellently, Mr. Hopkins. All right, Carter. I admit it was all worked out, just as you figured it. Hopkins, you... But, Nick, you haven't accounted for that woman who actually took the diamonds away from Coleman. Where does she come in? She doesn't, Patsy. She just, she just happened to run across the stones and being an opportunist took them. Oh. Well, Nick, I, I don't know how to thank you for what you've done. You've not only caught a thief and returned my jewels to me... You've also exposed another thief who might have gotten away with far more than this if he hadn't been found out. You know, Hopkins, this is just another illustration of the old adage. There's no such thing as a perfect crime. Crime doesn't pay. Ever. I'm curious, Nick. What happened to Reddy? Well, by the time the ship docked, Bob, Redding had recovered sufficiently to stand trial. And later, he was executed for what he did. Well, he certainly deserved it. It was a cold-blooded murder. 
Uh, Nick, uh, it's about time to look into the adventure that old Dutch Clint is going to bring us next week. All right, Bob, here it is. It's the story of one of the most unusual rackets and crime I've ever encountered. Unusual is right. It terrorized a whole city. And Patsy speaks from first-hand experience. Uh-huh. But to go on, Bob. This case included a murder on a dark street, a deserted warehouse... The telltale marks of tires in an alley... A masked man whom they called the boss. And that's enough for now. Uh, what do you call this story, Nick? I call it A Case of the Persistent Beggars. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the Cudahy Packing Company, makers of Old Dutch Cleanser. Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Lon Clark is starred as Nick, with Charlotte Manson featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Jock McGregor, plot outlined by Peggy L. Mayer. Original music is played by George Wright. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use Old Dutch Cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.